some of the original stories and original struggling with the screenplays that the bounty hunters played a more important role. This subplot of the bounty hunters pursuing the Millennium Falcon was actually George Lucas brilliantly setting up his original plan for the next movie. In the initial drafts of the trilogy's conclusion, Boba Fett was going to be the main villain. It would have focused solely on rescuing Han Solo, and then there would have been an entire other trilogy to deal with Luke and Vader and the Emperor. Good. Instead, we got four whole movies crushed together into one giant masterpiece that's now known as Return of the Jedi. Deep down, it's special to all of us in some way, but the odds of topping The Empire Strikes Back were approximately 2,756 to 1. I'm that one. When everyone first arrives on Bespin, they don't even realize that they're being hunted. I gotta say, Boba, this is one beauty of a ship. Not crazy about the name, though. The city is supposedly like this sanctuary that's somehow shielded away from the evils of the Emperor. It's literally a paradise in the clouds, but just like everything else in this movie, this quickly gets turned upside down. Slowly but surely, the heavenly landscape warps into a hellish nightmare, but in some deleted footage, things would have been even more intense. Actually, too intense. And it all starts where everything always goes wrong. A dinner with the in-laws. <laughs> I don't know what's more awesome, Vader deflecting the blast, or the fact that he took time to set up this whole meal and then Han just immediately starts shooting within a second of the doors opening. One thing that I quickly want to point out in this behind the scenes footage is the way Han rushes in front of Leia to protect her. You can't really see this from the angle in the actual scene, but I think it's just a really nice detail right before their big I love you. I know. Anyway, after this scene, Vader starts tormenting Han to try to get Luke to sense his pain through the force. Whoa! Well, I don't want to be tortured. All right, Luke's on Dagobah, there's a rebel base on Kashyyyk, and I'm the one who clogged the toilet on the 16th floor. No, oh, that was disgusting! Originally, this torture scene was going to be much more violent with electricity flashing all over. Just hear it from director Irvin Kirshner himself. Now, this scene I had to cut because I showed the machine in operation where there were all kinds of sort of needles and spikes and electronic things going, and everyone felt that it was too much for a film of this type. Now here, you heard his shout of pain. That had to be cut down even, because the little kiddies would be very frightened by it. Man, I tell you, that generation is just so soft. Back when I was a kid, I watched Anakin scream as the flesh melted off his limbless body. Honestly though, if you think that's bad, just wait until you find out what would have happened to Lando's trusty assistant, Lobot. People always talk about Chewie not getting a medal, but it's really Lobot who doesn't get enough recognition. He kept Vader's troops detained and played a critical role in helping the Rebels escape. But in this deleted scene, as we see him sneaking around and hiding, he ends up getting captured by the Empire. There's a comic that takes place after this movie where Luke returns to Cloud City to find his lost lightsaber. Lando also goes back with him, but only to rescue his old buddy Lobot. When he gets there, he uncovers a shocking discovery. Lobot unconscious with a hundred wires connected to his head. I'm not sure how the kiddos would have handled that, but if you want to see some other rare footage from the original trilogy, such as this extended Luke vs Vader footage, you could do so by tapping right over here.